back up to verse 15 of chapter 17. Here's another little principle of his life. The next one is David wanted to honor God with his attitude. In 1 Samuel 17 and verse 15, David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Now, wait a minute. He had not only been anointed as a future king, and he, you know, that's enough to make most of us proud. Now he'd been called as a, as a, a special helper to the king, and he played music for the king. I, I mean, he should have been all caught up with that, too, you know, and doing concerts for other people. But what did he do in his spare time? Went back home, took care of his sheep. You see, David wanted to honor God with his attitude. His attitude was that he was humble. His attitude was that, that he had been given a responsibility, and no matter how menial, I mean, when you play for the king, take care of sheep is nothing, except when you're taking care of the sheep for God. And David was so responsible that even when he, was, he had to be commuting into the palace or wherever he would go to take care of the king, he would always check out and make sure he'd done his work there, and then he'd slip back home, and he'd watch his flock. David wanted to honor God with his attitude. Look at verse 20 of the same uh, chapter 17, verse 20. David wanted to honor God also with his habits. It says in verse 20, so David rose early in the morning. You know what that means? Mind over mattress. Uh, you know, that's, that's something a, a lot of people haven't learned in our country. Uh, they just, uh, they like to spend a long time at the Church of the Inner Spring, you know, on uh, Pillow View Drive at Bedside Baptist. And uh, they, they just have never learned to have mind over mattress. David rose early in the morning. Look at this. He left the sheep with a keeper. Uh, this is his big day to go fight Goliath. But you know what? He doesn't neglect his duties, as we've been pointing out. He took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And I wonder, do you think that's really the first time he did that? I mean, took care of everything and made sure that his sheep were taken care of before he left on a mission. Did you know he had cultivated habits of personal discipline, of responsibility? He came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. And what I see there is that he had cultivated habits that were honorable to God. He wanted to honor God with his habits. And it makes me think of William James who wrote this. Could the young but realize how soon they will become mere walking bundles of habits? If so, they would give more heed to their conduct while they are plastic. You know, we're born kind of plastic. We can shape, but then we got, get hardened, and the hardening is our habits have formed our life. You know, we are spinning, William James says, our own fate, good or evil, never to be undone. Every, even the smallest stroke or virtue or vice will leave its little scar the drunken Rip Van Winkle in Jefferson's play excuses himself for every fresh dereliction by saying, I won't count this time. Well, he may not count it, but it's being counted nevertheless. Down in his nerve cells, in the fibers and the molecules of his body, they are counting it, they're registering it, they're storing it up to be used again when the next temptation comes. Nothing we ever do in strict scientific literalness is ever wiped out. Of course, this has a good side and a bad side. Now, that's an unbeliever's view. But in the strictest sense of habits, everything we do is either strengthening a good habit, which David did, or it's increasing the vice-like grip upon our lives of bad habits. And David wanted to honor God with his habits. He cultivated good ones.